Hi team, I want to start by using right brain, left brain thinking. Look at this picture, look at this problem. Look at the right, using your right brain, pick up the big details. What do you see? Take a few seconds and then we're going to start. Hi team, number 98 on the 47 MTEL math exam. I was doing this from uh, the last few days and I I said to myself, wow, this is a great problem because it demonstrates a lot of cool things in math. A lot of problems and a lot of very simple strategies to take a complex problem and solve it. So the first thing I'm going to do with this problem is that I'm going to look and observe the big details and then I'm going to read it. So we did this in the last video, left and right thinking. When you use your right brain, you always pick up the big details. So I'm looking here and I see a, a line then a funny looking line that says application one then a really funny looking line with all these blocks and cubes saying application two so that's my first instinct and if you've seen these types of problems before you're probably saying to yourself oh no not another one well they're really not that bad but um, it does involve a pattern that you apply it once then you apply it again now I'm going to read it over. This is where I go into a little bit more detail. I start using my left sign, reading each sentence, thinking about what it means, going line by line till I get to the end. So here it goes, starting from the top. 98. Use the information below to answer the question that follows. The diagram above shows a line segment and the first two figures that result from the execution of the following procedure. Step 1. Begin with a line segment. That's this right here. Step two, divide the line segment into three equal sections. No problem. Step three, remove the middle section of the line segment and replace it with a square while removing the square's base. Step four, repeat the procedure with each segment in the figure, then again with the next figure, and so on. If the length of the original line segment is three, what is the combined length of the segments in the figure that result from the third application of the procedure? And you have these answer choices. Hi team, now let me model how we do this. We start with a line segment. Now we're going to divide it into three parts. Take the middle part. Uh, what's that say? Uh, put it in the... Uh, okay, we make a box. Alright, we have a box. Um, and then I, okay, I have to remove the, the square base, all right. Great, I did it! All right, the last step three, or is that step four? All right, I, I do it again. Repeat the pr procedure, each segment, new figure, then again, with the next figure, and then, ah! Hi team, I was just playing around there, but now let's solve the problem. Uh, let's take a seemingly uh, wordy and very complex problem. If you don't like directions, it's, uh, this reminds me of like looking at a map and you're like, which, which way do I go with the map? But I think if we take it uh, from a much more basic perspective and, and we just look at the diagram to start to find out the pattern, I think we're going to have a lot more success. So um, one of the key details it tells us is that the line starts at, has a value of 3. So this has 3, which means when I do the whole adjustment here, I cut off all the pieces, divide into three spots like this, then raise the line and fill it in. This, all of these pieces are all, all going to have values of 1, because I'm creating that, a square made up of those pieces. And, and so, if this shape here had a value of 3, this new shape has a value of 5. Okay, that's helpful to know. Now, if I were to look at the second diagram, well, now all these 1s are now 5s. And this is kind of a little 5 and 5 and 5. So, I, again, I'm doing another increase. And of course, yes, yes, of course, we could, <laughs> if you really want to go crazy here, you could go that extra mile, and you could start doing that, that final 
piece there, but I'm not recommending that. Let's take another, uh, another approach to this. Our first line has a measure of 3, but our second line is increasing. It's actually increasing by 5 over, five over 3. Another way to think about this is you're increasing by 166%. Or, one, or I'd be multiplying the 3 times 1.66, or we could just say 5 over 3. That's our first transformation there. That's our first change. Our second change, we're going to increase it by the same amount. So again, I'm going to multiply it by 5 over 3. Because every one of those segments, I'm going to increase by roughly 166%. And then I'm going to do it a third time, which I'm not going to even attempt to draw, because you know me. You've seen my drawings before. We won't even go there. I'm going to do it a third time, increase it by the same amount. Each one of those lines, I'm going to be increasing by 166%, or we could say the same as multiplying by 5 over 3, or multiplying by uh, 1.66. So at the end of the day, I say that a lot in these videos. I hope I'm not getting like... Anyways, let's continue. At this point right here, we have 3 times 5 to the third, or we could, or sorry, 5 over 3, or we could even do 1.66 raised to the third. We don't even need to add in that element at this time. We could just do multiply these out. Now, when I multiply these out, I'm going to always reduce when I can, so these cancel each other out. I'm left with 5 times 5 times 5, and 3 times 3. And that gets me 125 bottom. So if I simplify this, it should come out to, to 125 divided by 9. And this is, going to be the new measure, this is going to be the new measurement of that line, whatever 125 divided by 9 is. I know you're saying, ah, how can I be so sure? Well, another way to think about it is we're taking that original value. This is sort of the exponential way. We're taking an initial value and we're increasing it by 166% each time, or 1.6. And if it was just one time around, it would be 3 times 1.6 to the first. But since it's 3 times around, I do that right there. And these will actually equal each other if you do it out. Okay, team. I know. Let me review it again on the audio. All right? And hopefully that helps. But again, I... Uh, the big leap that I did, and I just stuck with the picture. I didn't even, I, I don't even need to follow the instructions because I've seen these type of problems before. You have this, I know it's three. From three to five, I just have to figure out how do I get from three to five. Well, I'm going up two values. So in this case right here, that's going to get me this one right here. And that's for how we're going to solve it. Okay. Thanks so much for watching, team. I hope you found this helpful. We're trying to take another, uh, another way of cutting these problems. I know they can be intimidating, but if you follow these basic steps and keep it simple, you're going to be cool. All right. Take care. Keep on sending your questions, and I'll see you soon. Uh, oh, yeah, and everyone, you're absolutely welcome to attend the MTEL Math Workshops in Harvard Square. There's a two-day workshop coming up April 27th and 28th, and there's also the uh, private tutoring for teachers that need one-to-one uh, -one help. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Take care.